Welcome to VaderBox, I'm Bambi Francisco and with me as always is Ezra Roy's in VaderBox regular and this week's guest host once again is Richard Jalachandra. He is the CEO of Technorati. Richard, thanks for joining us once again. Thanks for having me. Glad you changed. <laughs> these, are, these are our fanciest clothes. But yeah, Ezra, so Ezra, um, what's the theme for this week? It's uh, mobile companies that start with T that aren't T-Mobile. And what are those companies? They're Tapulous and Tatango. Tapulous and Tatango. Tapulous is, um, of course, one of the Hot iPhone hottest, apps. hottest iPhone apps with Tap Tap Revenge. And um, as we look at these companies again, we're going to look at the pitch and we're going to talk about the novelty of the idea first, right. then the challenges, and then is there a business here? And of course, we have our new segment called the Liquid Scenarios Minute, where we're going to look at uh, estimates of the company's valuation and uh, exit strategies. So let's start with Tapulous. This is the developer, as we said, of uh, one of the leading applications on the iPhone called Tap Tap Revenge. Hi. My name is Bart Krem. I'm one of the founders and CEO of Tapulous, a startup based in Palo Alto. We're angel funded and we're building fun and social apps for the iPhone. We have two apps out right now on the iPhone. One is called Tap Tap Revenge. It's a music game for the iPhone. It's got a million users in three weeks and it lets you tap to the beats of your favorite songs. Our second app is called Twinkle and it's an app that lets you connect with your friends on Twinkle and people nearby. And what we're doing is we're building a whole family of apps for the iPhone because we believe that the iPhone marks the beginning of the second generation of mobile devices and there'll be big new opportunities. Okay, novelty. I think it's novel um, from an implementation standpoint. I think what they're doing is cool and fun and really leveraging the iPhone and you know I saw your interview with them where you do both play at the same time. It's tough to do on a you know a, a, a Palm Pilot or something. So they clearly got the essence of the platform and implemented that really well. I'm not sure how difficult it is for some other company to follow them, but right now they have clearly a good eye for what's possible on the iPhone. Um, this, I mean, this is like a classic uh, game or, or studio or publisher model. So it's, it's, it, it's really, really dependent on the creativity and, and innovation of the studio. Again, making the most out of the platform and as well as just having something fun to, fun to do. It's very hit driven. I think the novelty and getting before that, I think the novelty is in the way they marketed this, this, uh, mm -hmm. this game and pre-releasing it to uh, jailbreak phones. Right. and having 700,000 users actually using it. Now the trick is, if it were a lousy product, then they wouldn't have been so successful. So right. to your point, it is a hits business, and I think that's the challenge is when are they going to be, will they be able to continually come up with these great, cool apps and games? Right, and they, and they timed the, the opening of the platform well. I mean, it went, you know, they, they basically were there early in the iPhone, and they created a great app, and they got, they got out. So I think that that's, you know, I think that there's, there's sort of moments when there's an ability to get sort of a quick adoption curve and like mm -hmm. the guys who are right the, uh, like all these i like right the right first app available when facebook opened they just got you know 20 million users out of the gate because they just were in the right exactly right place at the right time and worked the strategy well so good for them for doing that too now the long term the, the long term goal here is to be the social network for the iphone so do you think that's uh, ambitious? Everybody wants to be the new social network for the iPhone. Yeah, <laughs> I think Apple probably wants to be the new social network for the iPhone. Um, um, so I think that might be a little ambitious. And heck, Facebook uh, itself, MySpace itself. Well, they have the um, Facebook Connect. I mean, I spent half the weekend on, on my Facebook app on my iPhone. So um, I think it's going to be a little difficult for uh, you know somebody to supplant a big brand like that. Um, I think going forward, their model is really going to get back to the creativity of, of the type of apps and games that they can then put on there. And what they should really look at is leveraging their initial brand success to go out and find other developers and really you know, go after a publisher model where they go after the best developers, get the best games, don't have to produce them all yourself, you just have to be the, the distributor. Well, you touched on the model, so is there a business here now, there's Apple's developers are making a million dollars a day in aggregate, I guess a million dollars a, a day already, or they have over the last month or the first month that Apple, the Apple Store launched. Uh, BART is looking to uh, drive revenue with advertising though, not subscription, so this is a free, I mean he's going to do both, but he thinks that advertising and on the mobile phones are about 5 to $30, I guess, CPM these days. 
Um, so do you think that he, sh he should be focusing on advertising, an advertising model, or subscription model? I, Richard said it. It's, this is a hits business. So at the end of the day, you have to have huge, huge consumption. And then the question becomes, how do you effectively monetize the hit? Because you can have a hit from a consumption standpoint. It isn't necessarily a hit financially. So a million users is really impressive. Um, getting them to pay five bucks. Uh, you won't be seeing a million, so, possibly. So, yeah, you're probably <laughs> not seeing a million. And then, so, so, and then also, even if you saw all million, they all paid five bucks. It's only five million bucks. So I mean, the reality is, you got to have a lot of you got to have a lot of millions in there to make a substantial business. If you're going to do it on an ad basis, you really, really have to make it so it doesn't screw up the experience. So how do you integrate those ads in in a way that are a effective? You have to jump two hurdles: one, not screw up the game, and two, deliver for the advertiser. So, mm -hmm. um, do you want people clicking on whatever the thing is to go to wherever the thing is in the middle of the game, or how do you how do you create a method that that effectively works? With an in-game advertising on a mobile device that delivers to the consumer yeah. for the advertiser that consumer without sort of taking away from the game. That's it's all of those are pretty challenge tough challenges. To ads. I think it's, I think it's a, a huge challenge to do everything you just said, yeah. um, and uh, just like looking from a pure reach and distribution of ad inventory and reach and. I mean, it's going to be hard to aggregate enough reach where it becomes interesting. And the other thing, you said 5 to $30 CPMs on a mobile device. I don't believe that's going to last very long. No. I think that the CPMs on mobile are going to come way down. And I think, unfortunately, the winner in mobile is going to be Google because it's a simple CPC model that's very easy to kind of get out there. Google doesn't win in every category. But anyway, guess what time it is? It's time for the Liquid Scenarios Minute. Yeah. This is the time we look at valuations and exit strategies, and most importantly, when founders do or don't make money. So Tapulus actually raised an angel round of, actually a significant angel round of $1.8 million from about 30 investors in 2008. Liquid Scenarios estimates that Tapulus Angel Round had a pre-money valuation of around $5.4 million. Tapulus' success in acquiring a million users of TapTap -tap Revenge in less than a month is rare and valuable. When applying premium CPM rates to Tapulus' existing traffic, the potential for revenue and earnings is clear. These factors may make Tapulus a target for acquisition very quickly, making the pricing for its round really high, perhaps as high as as Facebook's Series A or Mebo's Series B. Now, assuming the next round is in the range of seven to twelve million dollars, with a pre-money valuation of around seventy million to one hundred million, an exit of just two hundred million dollars a year later would give existing angels a thirty x return if they don't invest in the new round, and founders would actually walk away with one hundred million. That's the Liquid Scenarios Minute. Okay, yeah, easily, easier said sure. than done. Anytime 200 million, you have a 200 million dollar exit, everybody <laughs> walks away with a lot of money. I think the trick is uh, for, for, you know, and Richard can give his two cents. My, mine would be this guy has jumped out to a great head start. Um, there's probably some big companies right now who would love to have that position in the iPhone game. I would be actively trying to talk to some of those companies. I would <laughs> sell this as fast as I can yeah. because I don't yeah. think they can sustain it. Yeah. Because it's a hit driven business, it's yeah. really difficult. You've got a great asset and right now. Sell, sell it now. Contact Bambi, you can get my information. Yeah, <laughs> talk to Ezra. Wait, and if you need a, a, a bridge round or something yeah. like that, I'm happy to supply yeah, okay. it. Okay, yeah, bridge round. Call Richard or Ezra. Yeah. Okay, all right, yeah. so next company. Not as successful, but you know, budding company. I think they're doing fairly well. It's called Tatango. And this company allows groups to send out text messages through their mobile phone or online. Hi, my name is Derek Johnson, and I'm the founder and CEO of Tatango.com. In college, I was a member of fraternity, and the most frustrating thing was trying to get a message out to all the fraternity members for meetings, reminders, and events. As I started to look around, this problem wasn't isolated to only fraternities. All types of groups were running into the same problems as we were. This included athletic teams, families, community organizations, clubs, groups, and even businesses. The solution was Tatango.com the easiest way for any groups to send out a text message to all their group members at the same time from either their computer or mobile phone. To make group SMS economically feasible, we insert highly targeted advertising at the end of each text message. Okay, I, I have to say this guy is very confident. 
Yes. He's probably class president. No, he's hear. fraternity president. Oh, fraternity. <laughs> Social chair. Uh, That's why you had to yeah. get out. You know, the quarters game is starting in an hour. Exactly. You can't do that over email. I mean, so not <laughs> beer pong in ten minutes. So oh, novelty. No. I mean, I guess other sites do this. I've been playing around yeah. with. I mean, Twitter clearly you could have your own followers and. and yeah, and Yahoo groups could do a, a mobile application, and um, yeah. I don't think there's a lot of novelty to this. Um, execution would be incredibly important. Um, finding somebody uh, who could slot this in, this might be a quick sale again. Mm -hmm. um, something to get rid of quick because it would be very hard to dominate in this with big brands already out there. But who would yeah. buy this, Mr. I, Banker? I, well, I mean, I think, I, think, I, mean, I think Richard hit it on the head. This is a tricky one to say there aren't a lot of people who could. Back to the reason why Facebook will probably win on the iPhone because it's where the people are. The groups are actually already in lots of places. There are lots of software that does groups. So how hard is it for them to, for Google groups or Yahoo groups, one of the other major groups products or a zillion other types, LinkedIn groups, to add in a text message option. These guys could show them the way and they could execute really well and be acquired by any one of those guys mm -hmm. who had a need for maybe some cool innovation they, they had. I actually liked what he said, and I, and I said this before, actually, when we talked about Moses. I, I think there's, there are, there is a need for text-based messaging and group messaging. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I coach a little league, mm -hmm. and, uh, and getting out to all the parents the morning of the game, you know, with text messaging would be great, because you can, you can say it's going to be raining, or the game's right. late, or a different field, right. or whatever it is. So there is a need for this, mm -hmm. um, this type of service, mm -hmm. but I think that the, 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 the challenges and the competitive pressures would be, would be huge. So you might get a buyer sure. and not to just a future. You know, um, something else to think about too, um, you know, one of the reasons that venture capitalists invest is they like investing in people versus ideas. Sure. Um, the fact that this guy presented so well and so confidently, right. yeah. he might be worth taking a punt on because he's got that engineering presence and right. seems to have a lot of energy. So uh, Has a lot know, of energy, yeah. he has some sort of vision, he really loves Definitely his product. Definitely has a vision. And is, yeah. is in love with it and passionate about it and those are usually the companies that win whether it's a small exit or a big exit yeah I, mean, I like the fact that you can actually create a group pretty quickly and it creates a URL mm -hmm. creates your own page and I created a group pretty quickly has a little kink, a few kinks to work out mm -hmm. but um, but if you can focus on on that type of feature and actually get it distributed um, yeah I think if partners. you went to like if you went to uh, one of the new like social network kind of sites for like youth sports or you went mm -hmm. to one for, oh yeah like, I think he has to for, do like, that. you know beer pong or one of the other teenagers <laughs> emerging <laughs> services professional beer pong league. professional beer pongers <laughs> I think that there are any number of applications that where if you could find where the groups are they just don't have the feature I think that's what he needs to do so I would get a great BD guy and go out and just be like calling everybody Good you can one. possibly find who has groups and try to plug this in the business subscription I created a group for free, and then the next time I wanted to create another group, and it cost me five bucks a month. So that's their premium services. Is that the model that these guys should go after? Uh, the more you charge, the less you'll sign yeah. up. Yeah, I think this is. I think Take this is tough to for know. them. I mean, I think that the reality is with these kinds of services for them, mm -hmm. it's all about what they want to do. If they want to build a small cash flow business, and they all, you know, you know, make a little money on it. That's fine. If they want to have a substantial exit. If they're putting adoption barriers in place, I, don't, I frankly don't like for high growth businesses any uh, toll that limits the fundamental consumption of the product. So as soon as they stick a toll in there and it limits adoption and consumption, okay. they've the already... Minute, and, and with somebody like a Twitter yeah. out there right now that's yeah. totally free, I mean, yeah. why would you sign up for this when I just start a, a group of following in Twitter? Right. So I mean, so you got to weigh the dice. Yeah. So you got on one hand, you got tap tap revenge. You get a million people giving something away for free. On this hand, you got these guys trying to charge. They definitely won't get the million people overnight like tap right. tap revenge did. So how do you balance those two things? It's, it's tricky. Right. Not sure they have you know the same ambitions as tap tap revenge or Twitter. I mean, the company raised two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So now it's time, as estimated by Liquid Scenario. So you know what that time is. Uh, it's time uh, for the Liquid Scenarios minute, yeah. where we're going to check out the. Um, Possible exit uh, strategies based on estimated valuations um, as compiled by Liquid Scenario. So, Tatango looks like they've raised about two hundred fifty thousand um, dollars, and they may have raised another tranche um, in two thousand and eight. Assuming the angel round was structured as a Series A1 round, Liquid Scenarios estimates that the pre-money valuation was around one and a half million dollars. Liquid Scenarios estimates that Tatango's Series A VC round will be in the range of three to five million dollars with a pre-money valuation of around six million. 
Let's compare to Tango's user and traffic growth at the early stage compared to Twitter's early growth and what that suggests about potential for the future value of Tango. Based on blog posts, Twitter's pre-money value last July was around $20 million, with about 340,000 users. Twitter's most recent funding was reportedly $60 million pre-money with 1 million users. And both pre-money valuations suggest Twitter was valued at about $60 per public user. If Tatango could command a similar amount per user in a sale, the founders, angels, and Z VCs would all do quite well. With angels getting nearly 10x return, founders walking away with nearly $10 million in the first round of VCs getting over 3x. That's the Liquid Scenarios Minute. So, comments? I think that, did it say how many users they had? I don't yeah, think, I didn't they didn't have, that was the number I, I was think in for. the pitch that he said that, they're, that they've had about 2,000, 4,000, it's several okay. thousand. Yeah. Okay, so. So, so I mean, I think that the trick here is that, first off, they're different things. What Twitter does and what these guys do are different, and Twitter sure. is a platform application and has, and has established a pretty strong beachhead in sort of microblogging, and so I think they're, they are accomplishing different objectives. Although Twitter has a mobile aspect, it's really about microblogging and, and sort of publishing more than it is about groups and collaboration. Right. Um, uh, you know, I think to me, this is one of those companies that I wouldn't raise a lot more money. I think that this is a nice, cool idea. If they implement mm -hmm. it well, if they, if they got a couple of good hits from a business development standpoint, there could be a nice little exit and all these guys can get a cool new car and like be totally out of the blocks, you know, racing on their careers. Oh, I don't yeah. think if they go out, the worst thing that's gonna happen is they're gonna meet a really charming venture capitalist is going to convince them to take six million dollars, make them feel like kings of the world, and they're going to have a eight million dollar exit. And the venture capitalists will, you know, end up taking the money, <laughs> and, and and they won't get much out Squeezing of it, and they'll still out. be driving their beaters. So, yeah. I, I would avoid the big raise, and I would just make a cool little company and go around to friends and family. Um, and I think from an operational standpoint, Ezra is absolutely right. Go find a kick-ass biz dev guy yeah. because you actually might hit the distribution deal that does take you to the next level. Then you, it makes sense to go get the $6 million round. Right. Or I was going to say, without the VCs, bypassing them all together, yeah. it would be great to right. do 250000 and get to profitability. I don't know where they are. Right. but I also don't know where they are with the carriers as well because there might be a, a deal with the carriers that they could do that uh, helps them a little bit. Sure. Okay. So. And if they did a good job, I mean, there's guys out there like, you know, I don't know, the, the sort of the folks who, the, the Mboxes and the Veri mm -hmm. who bought the whatchamacallit and the and Amdocs who bought the other whatchamacallit, all the aggregator guys. And, you know, maybe there's a great, um, you know, there's a great exit here for being an app that goes along with those SMS mm -hmm. aggregator guys that, mm -hmm. that, that does a really nice job um, okay. in that category. So I think there's a lot of ways for them to get exits. I just don't think they need to raise a lot of money to get there. Okay. Okay. Tapulous and Tatango, I know again, two different type of companies, but which one would you invest in? Um, which one would you make a bet in? Uh, I, I would probably bet on Tapulous, uh, just because they got <laughs> the they Mo. Have a million <laughs> they have the Mo right now. I mean, a yeah. million users in three weeks is pretty darn impressive. Yeah, and, uh, you know, even if they launched 20 new apps and only one of them was a hit, that's still pretty darn good. They could still sort of ride on the coattails of their, or just sort of still leverage the tap tap revenge yep. and make some money there. I, you know, I, I think Tapulous is a great company. Clearly, they sort of they, they've got great mo, as Richard said. And right. I think the trick now is timing the okay. exit versus the raise. My fear for them would be that again they go out and and, and do a huge one raise. hit wonder. They do a huge, and they do a huge raise, raise and, and you've got, yeah. next thing you've got Dex's Midnight Runners and they're just another <laughs> 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 Well, on that yeah. note, yeah. okay, well, that's it for uh, this week's Vader Box. Ezra, yeah. thanks again. And uh, Richard Jalachandra, thank you so much for being our guest host twice and, uh, for two segments. So, you've been watching Vader Box on Bambi Francisco. We'll see you next time on Vader TV.